Welcome to the first in what we hope is a series of videos on selected topics in biomedical informatics. I'm Dr. Philip Croth, a professor of biomedical informatics at the University of New Mexico School of Medicine. This video is produced by the University of New Mexico's Health Sciences Library and Informatics Center and is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike 4.0 International License. That means you're welcome to share and use this video for any non-commercial purpose, so long as you give credit to the original authors when doing so. We hope this and future videos will be informative and spark many discussions about biomedical informatics. The title of this video is, What is Biomedical Informatics? In my career as a teacher, practitioner, and scholar of various aspects of biomedical informatics, I have found this is probably the most often asked and most frequently misunderstood question that comes up. Part of the problem is that there is no one universally recognized formal definition. To answer this question, let us start with what biomedical informatics is not. It is not information technology or IT. It is not about computer programming. Although many people who work in biomedical informatics do have programming skills or work with those that do. It is not about computer repair or expertise per se. Although again, many people who work in the field do know a lot about many different kinds of computers or work closely with those that do. If someone has informatics in their official title, do not go to them for help fixing your computer, installing software, or designing your web page. You will likely be disappointed and you will most likely be referred to the proper IT support personnel in your organization. I mentioned that there is no universally accepted definition. In fact, there are many people and organizations who have attempted to formalize a definition. Part of the reason why biomedical informatics is so hard to define is that it is a relatively new, rapidly advancing and changing field. In addition, the field has attracted people from many different established professions and disciplines. There are mathematicians, engineers, librarians, biochemists, nurses, physicians, physical therapists, nutritionists, computer scientists, and pharmacists, just to name a few. I like to say that biomedical informatics is polydisciplinary in that it applies to many different fields and specializations. Because of the rapidly evolving nature of biomedical informatics and the many fields that intersect with it, it should not be surprising that people in the field do not always agree on one definition or even who, how, and when the term informatics was first used. In fact, if you want to spark a heated discussion amongst those who work in the field, talking about what your own definition of biomedical informatics is will definitely fire up some debate and conversation. Getting back to the formal definition of biomedical informatics, there are many definitions available and I encourage you to search for them. I will use the American Medical Informatics Association's most recent formal definition of biomedical informatics that came out in a paper published by its board of directors in its November 1st, 2012 issue of their journal, the Journal of the American Medical Informatics Association, or JAMIA. This definition states, biomedical informatics is the interdisciplinary field that studies and pursues the effective uses of biomedical data information and knowledge for scientific inquiry, problem solving, and decision making, driven by efforts to improve human health. It also has four bullet points that follow and are titled Scope and Breadth of Discipline, Theory and Methodology, Technological Approach, and Human and Social Context. These are each defined further. I would like to point out a few things I feel are important to note about AMIA's definition. First is that the definition contains a total of 167 words. 
I'll not read the entire definition in the interest of time, but given its length, you can see that it is complex and will therefore likely need to be updated from time to time. The second important aspect of this definition is that it focuses on data and basically how to derive effective uses of data or to derive new information and knowledge from data to, quote, advance human health, unquote. As our world fills up with more and more data, how we take advantage of that and put that data to good use is the challenge of the kind of work informaticians do. I also like this definition because it emphasizes the, quote, human and social context, unquote, of biomedical informatics as well. As anyone who's been involved with the installation of an electronic health record or other clinical system will tell you, understanding the organizational culture and how that affects the acceptance of the system you are deploying is critical to a successful installation and ultimate adoption by its users. Before we go on to discuss the subdomains of biomedical informatics, I want to say a word about the legitimacy of paper. One of the first things I teach in my introduction to biomedical informatics class is that paper is not evil. The ultimate goal of people who work in the field is usually not to eliminate paper, although this is certainly sometimes the case. My point here is that if paper works better to achieve your goal than any other medium or system, why would you not use paper? True, that as we apply technology to informatics problems and the amount of data we work with increases, the reduction of the use of paper is a common side effect, but it should not usually be the goal or focus of any project. There is a subtle but extremely important difference between having the goal to eliminate paper and the goal to have the best and most efficient system to accomplish its goals. It is easy to develop systems to eliminate paper, but usually difficult to do so without causing unintentional consequences. My point here is simply to focus on the goals you're trying to accomplish and to use what technologies, including even paper, that can best help you meet those goals. Do not just focus on how much paper you can eliminate or on the latest new whiz-bang technology you want to try out. The last thing I want to talk about with regards to the definition of biomedical informatics is to give you some idea of the subdomains of the field that have emerged. Again, there is no formal and recognized specifications for any of the subdomains. These are terms that are evolving as the field evolves. This is what I call the arrow diagram. It is a graphical representation of the breadth of the field that is collectively referred to as, quote, biomedical informatics, unquote. This diagram is not meant to be an all-inclusive or complete representation of the entire field. It is just a sampling of a few common subdomains to illustrate the concept of how these relate to each other. Also, the subdomains are not mutually exclusive, as many of the concepts, ideas, and science developed in one subdomain are used in the others. The subdomains refer to what their emphasis is on, and there are no hard boundaries between them. In this graphic, the subdomains are organized roughly by the size of the elements each domain primarily focuses on. Starting on the left with small molecules, there is the domain of chemi-informatics, and focuses on managing the data and knowledge of small molecules supporting new drug discovery and development. Moving up to macromolecules, such as DNA and proteins, the term bioinformatics is used. The science of storing, organizing, and analyzing large amounts of DNA and pro protein sequencing data is the major focus in this domain. It is important to note here that the term bioinformatics, that refers to the subdomain I just described, is not to be confused with biomedical informatics that refers to the field as a whole, or one that includes all of the many subdomains. People new to the biomedical informatics field often make the mistake of referring to the entire field incorrectly as bioinformatics. This not only creates confusion, but is a signal from those who use the term incorrectly that they are relatively new to the field and don't yet understand the basic definitions. My point here 
is that in biomedical informatics circles at least, using the right terminology is very important and is worth the time to get it right. Moving up to cells and organ systems, pharmacoinformatics focuses on areas such as managing pharmacies inventories, using IT to improve the safety of drug delivery, managing drug-drug interactions, etc. When we get up to whole patients, the domain is called clinical informatics, electronic health records or EHRs, how patients' health data is shared between multiple healthcare institutions, medical decision support, and how technology can improve the quality and reduce the cost of health care are just a few examples in this domain. Finally, on the rightmost part of the arrow is public health informatics that deals with the standards, tools, and the science of managing population level data for health departments, epidemiologists, researchers, and others. Examples in this domain include standards for the exchange of vaccination information, geocoding and mapping of population data, vaccination registries, and biosurveillance. Again, this is not an exhaustive list of subdomains, and these are not official definitions. These are just a sampling of some of the more established domains, so you can get the general idea how the field is structured and what some of the subdomains focus on. There are more subdomains, and I'm sure more new ones will appear as the field evolves. To summarize this video, this is just the starting point. I hope you now have a basic appreciation for the polydisciplinary nature of biomedical informatics and a beginner's understanding of the field and some of its subdomains. As you study biomedical informatics more, you're likely to come up with your own definition of the field, depending on what subdomains interest you the most. I wish you well in that endeavor.